of or second third. Okay, second half of or second third of the 2017 paper. Um, which of the following describes the bonding in ethane? Okay, it's pretty much a straight KU. Um, ethane. Okay, we have completely symmetrical bonding, everything the same around here. This is fully tetrahedral um, around each carbon. So we have one, two, three, four identical bonds. So that is sp3 hybridized to give you your three um, p orbitals and your 1s, making this all degenerate and the same. Um, and therefore, they're also all sigma bonds. There is no p orbitals that are being left at the side. So b. Question 12. Pyridine has the following structure. The number of sigma bonds in a molecule of pyridine is now this is really easy to get wrong because we have, going around the outside of this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you'll notice you've got three pi bonds, but they're not looking for those. So you've got six already, but then you have to remember that you've got hydrogens off here. So you've actually got another one here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Be really careful. Question 13. Oh, this is nice. This is a definition. A racemic mixture is. Okay, so what we're looking for is stereoisomers. So get rid of my geometrics. Uh, you need two of them and you need them to be or the, the actual pair and they need to be in equal proportions because one of them is spinning it one way and one of it's spinning it the other way. And that means that the light, plane polarised, if you put it through, would just remain completely straight. Okay, so we need a pair mixed in equal proportions. Question 14, right, you've got two equations and that's fine. The nucleophiles in these two reactions are, so if we're looking for a nucleophile, you're looking for something that likes, we're looking for something that likes um, positive. So we look for, look for negative, like if you've got a negative charge, you're in there straight away. If you can't find a negative, look for a lone pair because that's a kind of bubble of negative charge that's ready to attack a, a positive. If you can't find that, look for polarities in the bond and you're looking for the delta minus. Right, so the negative is kind of obvious here. And in the first reaction, well, the first reaction, we're looking here because we've got an NH3, which means that we have NH3 and most importantly, a lone pair on that one. So, hence D. Right, question 15. Compound X has a gram formula mass of less than 100. Complete combustion of compound X produces carbon dioxide and water only. Reduction of compound X produces a secondary alcohol. Compound X is most likely to be. Okay, right, so let's just work it through each one. Gram formula mass of, okay, this, sorry, this one here, less than 100 grams. So, I did go and work all of them out, but I didn't really have to. What I should have done was just look at the bottom one. Um, this has got C6H5. So you add that one to what's going on here, and this is well over the 100 grams. Everything else works within it. Um, like this is pretty heavy, but that brings it up to 92.5. Okay, so complete combustion of compound X produces carbon dioxide and water only. Well, that means that you get rid of this one because that's got a chlorine in it, and that would not produce just carbon dioxide and water. So we're left with these two in the running, A and C, and then it says reduction of compound X produces a secondary alcohol. Well, you should know, I'm now looking for a ketone if I want to take it back to a secondary alcohol. Because if I have an aldehyde, that would take me back to a primary. And I don't want that, so I'm looking for a secondary, and that's C is an aldehyde. Okay, question 16. We've got a table with amines and boiling points, and then you're asked to look at the information in the table and then talk about what's going on. But the first thing they're talking about is tertiary, secondary, primary alcohols. So, sorry, not alcohols, amines. So let's figure out exactly what's going on here. Um, so the bottom one here, that's a primary. Oh, primary. Okay, that's a primary because the nitrogen is only attached to one carbon. Okay, um, our next one up is a secondary, 
because this nitrogen is attached to two carbons and the top one is a tertiary because the nitrogen has three carbons attached to it. Okay, so that's really what we need to have for when we're looking at the rest of it. Tertiary amine has the highest boiling point. Absolutely not, it's got the lowest. The secondary amine has the lowest boiling point. Nope, it's in the middle. Okay, the primary amine has a lower boiling point than the tertiary. Nope. The secondary amine has a lower boiling point than the primary. Yes. Okay. Question 17, I think this is actually a higher question to be honest. Compound Y reacts with the product of its own oxidation to form an ester. Compound Y could be. Okay, so for an ester you need an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. By condensation gives you your ester. So for a carboxylic acid, um, these are all propes, so let's go with this one. It's going to be this is going to be propanoic acid. So I need to get the alcohol that would produce propanoic acid. That must be propan one all, because it has to be the primary to get to the aldehyde to then get to the propanoic acid. So compound Y has to be propan one all. Propan 2 all would make the ketone, that wouldn't do anything. Propanoic acid obviously can't then oxidise to make something else. It's already there. And propanol is not um, reacting. It has to be the right the way back to the alcohol. Okay. Question 18. Which of the following statements about benzene is correct? Um, A, the benzene molecule is planar. That is absolutely correct. So you're actually there straight away. But just to be clear... Um, benzene does not react with electrophiles. Well, that's not true because the whole point about benzene, as far as the reactions you know, it's electrophilic substitution. So let's get rid of that, definitely. Benzene readily undergoes nucleophilic attack. Refer to what I just said. It's electrophilic substitution, so nope. Um, the benzene molecule contains carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds of two different lengths. Well, that's not true, and you can go to data book to check because what you have is the carbon, it gives you it like this, so you've got carbon delocalised um, and, a and a sigma, and they're all of exactly the same length. That's the whole point, which is why it is planar. So get rid of that, and that's you. Question 19. Chlorine has two isotopes, uh, Cl35 and Cl37. These isotopes are present in a sample of 111 trichloroethane. The number of molecular ion peaks expected in the mass spectrum of this is... Right, this is a... I can't decide if it's tricky or not. Okay, so you're looking for the different combinations of masses that you could get, but I'm not actually worried about anything in terms of the ethane. All I'm worried about is this 111 trichloral. So I'm looking at three chlorines. So I could have 337s. Oh, 37, 37. Okay, and nothing in terms of 35s. Or I could have two 37s and 135. Or I could have 137 and two 35s. Or I could have no 37s at all and three 35s. This is all the possible combinations of chlorine. And it doesn't matter what order they're in, which where they are exactly on the, um, you know, on anything, because for a start, they're all on number one anyway. Um, so really, it's just these are the possibilities. So I have one, two, three four different possibilities so I could four different peaks are potentially there it's, it's a strange question question 20 you'll notice I have pulled the date book for for this one following substance was analyzed using an infrared spectrometer the spectrum produced would not have a significant peak in the wave number range so you've been given what we're looking at so I'm just going to highlight each of those so we've got um, at my 1700 to 1680. I have the C double bond O stretch in alkyl, aromatic and alkyl ketones. Um, yep, that's there. Okay, um, I'm now looking for my alkane C to H stretch. Well, I definitely have that. Okay, all over the place. Um, my 3100 to 3000 benzene ring. This is not a benzene ring anymore. I don't have delocalized. So here's my answer, and just to check with D, um, and we're going carboxylic acid, no, that's not right, uh, 3,500 to 3,003, 
There we go. Aiming NH2 stretch. So that's good. Let me just get rid of that wrong bit. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. It's not a benzene ring, so you're not going to have a benzene CTH stretch. And that's the part.